I'm going to tell you a true story from the Old West about a lawman and gunfighter and a drama that unfolded in El Paso, Texas in 1881-1882. The story is so incredible that you won't believe they haven't made this into a Western movie yet. The story is about what happened in El Paso, Texas in 1881 and 1882 when Dallas Studenmeyer was hired by the town council as town marshal to come to El Paso and clean up the lawless town. So before we get started, I have to tell you who Dallas Studenmeyer was. Dallas Studenmeyer was born in 1845 in Alabama. He joined the Confederates in the Civil War as a very young teenager, 15 as a matter of fact. He was in several battles, wounded multiple times, and he carried two bullets in his body for the rest of his life. But he also learned how to fight there. He carried two revolvers, and he was equal, equally proficient at shooting with either hand or at the same time. He was a Texas Ranger for a while, and he was a town marshal in, in uh, New Mexico territory when he got an offer of a better job in El Paso, Texas. His uh, brother-in-law had heard that the town council was looking for a, a man with a, a, a tough uh, reputation for violence. And so he told them, there ain't no guy rougher than this guy. They, so they hired Dallas to, to clean up the town of El Paso. Now, El Paso, in the spring of 1881, was extremely lawless. They had been through uh, multiple town marshals that were either incompetent or corrupt, and crime was just out of control. There's also a little bit of a, uh, an organized criminal element there with some of the businessmen. And so that's the situation that he walked into in the spring of 1881. The prior town marshal was corrupt, the, the deputy was a drunk, and so one of the first things that he did on the, on the job is he went over, found the deputy that had the keys to the town, he said, I need the keys, and, he, and this guy stalled around, so Dallas took him in the street in front of everybody, turned him upside down and shook him until the keys fell out of his pockets. So this guy, needless to say, was uh, humiliated and, and, and had a vendetta against Dallas from then on. Three days after he was hired, he was in, involved in the first gunfight, the four dead in five seconds gunfight, which is very, a very f famous one. And um, you can read the details on that because it's complicated. I'm not going to go into that right now. Over the next year, he was involved in several more scrapes and total of 10 men he shot down. Now, what happened was right after that, uh, I think it was a couple of days. It's hard to keep all this straight. A couple of days after that, the, the deputy that Dallas had humiliated by turning him upside down and shaking him, knocking the keys out of his pocket, he was prompted by the Mannings, who were, they were bar owners, and there, they were, there were three of them, and they, they, they goaded this guy into trying to assassinate you know, uh, Dallas because they didn't have the guts to face him. So this guy was laying in wait with, with a double barrel shotgun. He was going to ambush him and just murder him which was common back then. And as, as Dallas and his brother-in-law approached, this guy kind of lost it and fired two shots up in the air. He, he actually, I think he fell down, gun went off because his finger was on the trigger, and Dallas whipped out his pistols and just mowed this guy down in brutal fashion. So all this, so this, this happened just a couple days later. And then as the time unfolded over the next year, he was involved in several more, several more shooting confrontations. But he cleaned up the town, the town council eventually wanted to get rid of him. They they held a meeting one time, and they were they were they were about to take a vote on okay we're going to vote him out you know because we don't like him he scares us. He walked in there drunk, started twirling his pistols, and says, "I can straddle any one of you aldermen. I'm not going to let you take my job today." And they calmed him down and said, "Yeah, let's not vote on this." So so that's how it went. That's that's it's kind of like the story. Uh, High Plains dr dr Drifter with Clint Eastwood, when they, they find the baddest guy they can get, and then after they hire him, they're like, we want to get rid of this guy, but we can't. So the way the story ends is kind of sad, and that's the only thing that, that wouldn't be like a Western movie, but that's the way real life was. The Mannings, those three brothers that owned the bars, they had an ongoing feud with, with him, and uh, they one of them killed his brother-in-law, and the shooting was ruled self-defense. Dallas tried to move on. He, uh, he eventually, he quit the job as the town marshal and, and he got a job as a, a U.S. marshal, I believe, but he based in El Paso still. 
He was after a guy, and he went into one of the Manning's bars which broke the treaty they had, the peace treaty. He, they, he agreed to stay out of their bars, but he went into this bar looking for this guy. So the Mannings demanded to have a, a powwow with him to, be, to, to rehash a new treaty because he broke the treaty. So he met with the three of them in their bar, which tells you how, how fearless he was. This guy was absolutely fearless, totally confident in himself. So he met with them, and uh, one of them walked out the door. He started to argue with another one. Uh, they, 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 uh, I can't remember if they drew first or they started to wrestle. But at some point, they went for their guns, and a third party that was supposedly neutral, in the, in the act of trying to break them up, he, he knocked Dallas's arm as he was trying to shoot, and his shot went astray. The other guy hit him. The Manning brother hit him. And I think he broke his arm. He shot him again. The, the, the first shot broke his arm. The second shot sh shot him in the chest, but some paper stopped the bullet. Dallas went down, but he, he pulled out the other gun, and he was about to shoot that guy when the other brother came back in and shot him in the back of the head. So that's how the story ends. It's kind of sad, uh, but uh, that's real life. It's not fair. It's complicated. It's a great story. I recommend you read it. And I'm going to put a link in the, in the description to the website where I got most of the information for this. I read several, but there was one that really had a lot more on him. So, hope you enjoyed that, and that's, the, uh, that's today's uh, Old West True Gunfighter Story. about a gunfighter and lawman. He uh, was wounded multiple times in the town of El Paso, Texas in the drama that unfolded there in 1881, 1882. The story's about the man, he was born in Alabama in 1845. He joined the uh, Confederates in this, in this Civil War as a very young teenager, 15 years old. And there he was involved in several battles.